Hello everybody, welcome back to Motorsport Manager. It's time for the off-season as we promoted for to the DTM for the 2020 year. Now, as we looked at last time, our big problem, of course, is that our car parts are not going to be competitive. Let's see that a little more closely. Up, oh, we're dead last, and look at all those arrows up at the top. 12th, 12th. 12, 12, 12. Now this looks awful similar to what we had when we started out in the WTCR. The difference, of course, moving up is that we have to be able to compete at some point because if we finish last, we just get relegated back down. So that's our big goal for this year is just to survive. So I've taken a look at some of the drivers that might be available. Well, let's take a look at our three contracts, first of all. Because Svaneborg is here and Money is going to be an issue in terms of the per race amount until we get our team marketability back up. And she's cheap. So she's cheap and she's got the, you know, the, the good feedback. Not great, but good. I'm going to keep her around if I can. She says wages aren't very important. So I might be able to keep her for the same amount of money. Wants a long contract. That's fine with me. Status isn't too important. We'll go reserve. Not going to add on any bonuses because she doesn't care about those. Okay, so we'll send her that proposal. You can keep on your current job for three years. You come with us up to the higher prestige DTM. Hopefully that makes you happy. Decker is going away, and if we look at the drivers in the DTM, the average is a little above 3.5. There are some drivers at about Decker's level, but most of them are better. And I, I would like to upgrade... Her. Obviously, we're going to hang on to Menezes, but not break the bank in doing it. And also, marketability, obviously, going to be a huge plus. I went and looked around, and there's one one uh, driver, I think, that's above the rest in terms of the possibilities. I thought about, like, Lucas Auer, or Poppy Orr, Timo Shader, some of the stronger drivers in the WTCR. All of them want about a million, maybe a little less, a little more a race. That's really the top echelon amounts. And I, you know, I, I stuck around, look at this guy. Matteo Caroli, an Italian. He's 23. See, he's got strong marketability. None of that is temporary. He's sitting at 85%. So that's good. He's a little up and down in terms of his stats here. I don't think he's quite as good as Menezes is. Now, what about his demands? His wages aren't very important. I'm going to get him for about this much. Now, that would be my starting offer that I think I could land him in. That would probably be a little bit low. And this is just a little bit above what Menezes makes, about 560000 So I'm getting another. There are a couple drivers above four stars. There's one, I think, at four and a half is the biggest. So he's not going to be like the best driver on the DTM. But I would have, I think, a competitive pair of drivers, maybe probably just above top half in the DTM pair of drivers if he signs. And then hopefully I would be able to go further on with that. Now, um, give him equal status because he's about the same ability. And then he wants a short contract, so I'll split the difference, see if I can get him to sign a medium length one while we sort out our finances in the first couple of years. Signing on fee isn't very important. Bonus size, not very important. Bonus size, not very important. So he doesn't want any of that. Uh, I think we've got a pretty good shot at him, and he's the one I'd like to replace Decker with. So then the other spot, we've got Blomquist for two more years. We've got Clark for another year. But what about Doyle? And we need a reliability um, person, but I'd like a better quality mechanic. I think I need to move, you know, just move up here and be willing to pay a little more for that. Mechanics. Let's see who's not uh, already taken. And ultimately I settled on this guy, Georgios Constantitis of Greece. He's working for Mulsanne in the WTCR, so we'd be bringing him up with us. And I like his overall stats here. Obviously, reliability being the key one. He could switch over to performance as well. Um, the only one he's weak on is part fixes, and I don't do a... I really try to avoid doing that at all. So um, he's got the right profile. So his wages are fairly important. So he wants a bit of a raise. I'm going to try this, and I may have to boost it up higher. 
He wants a long contract, that's fine. Doesn't mind who pays the buyout clause of 418 k So I'll let you pay all of that. You want a signing on fee. Let's, let's max you out with that and then leave the bonus size that you don't care off. So I'm hoping this is, you know what, I'm going to bump you up one more and make sure you're not offended by that. Now we're only paying Griffin Clark, the other uh, mechanic, like 74, 75,000. So this is significantly more than what we're paying now. Again, he's, he's worth it. I'm thinking I, I really want to get a pretty strong driving team and mechanics in place. So I'm going to make that offer. Once I have all of that set, then I can try to move on to other things, improving the car and whatnot. And I feel comfortable with spending a little bit extra money, not a lot, but a little bit, because we have almost $60 million in the bank. I don't know how much the chassis is going to cost, but I think I can go that route. Let's take a quick crew look at these pit crew, uh, get them out of the way. Nope. Nope. Probably could use one more tire person, so I'm going to bring them in just as a backup option. I feel comfortable with where we are on the uh, on the jack work. I'll just keep you there in case I need someone in case of emergency. But otherwise, and actually, I should, before I go too far with this, I should take a look at our rules. So we have have long practice sessions. 10-minute qualifying is medium. Uh, we have longer races, so that's going to be uh, more of a long-term strategy type of thing. Normal semi-sequential uh, points for the top 10, so that's not too bad. Same as we had before. We're free to choose whatever tire compounds we want, and uh, but there are only two available. Both types of cars, no refueling again, no driver aids. So driver aids were allowed in the WTCR, so that's a bit of a change. There is qualifying, and we do have bonus payments. And the ERS is here. No difference in prize money between the top and bottom teams. Everybody's rewarded equally. Okay. So yeah, the ERS should, of course, help us. That's always been something that I've been able to use to my advantage. But yeah, the fact that there's no refueling means that I don't have to worry about, like, I have no reason to get for somebody like Ford, for example. So let's just get rid of those two. And we'll settle for there. And it's time to uh, move on here. Let's see what happens. And let's get some of our contract proposals going. And our new driver is willing to come in. Let's sign that deal. Going to get rid of Claire Decker. Going to lose 251k in the process. And Decker is not happy. He says we're going to kick some serious ass together, and uh, Rio Harai reporting that he said, I was hoping the Timex Racing would call, to be honest. Really looking forward to look, working with my new boss, the Timex, and the entire team. Excellent. Let's get this done. So now we have a strong driver team for the new year. At least I think it's a strong driver team. Yeah, they think we're, they think, they think we're second overall in drivers. And you know, they should be able to make up for a little bit of the car's weaknesses, the ERS should be able to make up for a little bit of the car's weaknesses. So if we can get this car even up to vaguely competitive, then we should be able to make some noise. That's not going to happen right away, but uh, it should be able to happen eventually. And Svenaborg willing to come back for the same amount. And basically just a, a pure contract extension. So that's good. Cool to get that out of the way. I'm happy to be here, so I'm glad that you still wanted me. So that's that's just as simple and basic as it gets. Car spec changes. DTM should utilize more efficient technologies to better reflect road car development. Initial loss of performance. Okay. So there's another reset for the second year in a row. That's weird. 
Anyway, let's get uh, let's get that car designed. Three million more added. Okay. And you can see there are no bad uh, engine suppliers here. There's just good and really good. And I may want to go with Mercedes-Benz, save a little bit of money, uh, but go for the improvability. Because let's see what the improvability difference is. This would pick it up to three and a half. That's the same. Okay, this, the improvability here is noticeably better, and there it's worse. Okay, so basically got the cheap option and the expensive option. It would cost another $6 million if we moved up from Mercedes-Benz to BMW. And they would also be much better performance for now. Oh, what about this one? This is base, yeah, that's not as good either. So I at least want to go with Mercedes. Fuel supplier. Yuck. We can have bad fuel efficiency if we want improvability, and there's nobody that's... Yeah, we either got to go performance or improvability. We're definitely going improvability here. We don't really have any choice. So our fuel efficiency is going to be bad, and there's just nothing we can do about that. Okay, tire wear and tire heating. They're either five or three and a half million. And this is almost as good, at least but not quite the cost. So, I don't see any reason not to just go that way. Brake supplier. There's not a huge difference in price, and they're not the highest, but they are for, for the brakes, but they're not the highest cost, but they're definitely the highest overall performance. Let's go there. So that's 17 million. You can see our tires are very good. Our fuel efficiency is bad, but our improvability is up there. And actually, fuel efficiency only average, and I think that's just because the DTM cars are better. Okay, and then we have different uh, chassis here. Starting charge of zero, harvest efficiency 92%. Starting charge of 40, and lower harvest efficiency. See, I've never had to deal with this before. And I like having a higher harvest efficiency. I could be wrong, but I, I just think using the higher harvest efficiency over the race is what I'm going to want to go with. And uh, have, having zero starting charge is something that has to be has to be dealt with. But usually we fill the battery multiple times over the course of a race. So I still think that having the higher harvest efficiency is going to be better in the long run. That's what I'm going to go with. Okay. So the question is, do I want to accept this, or do I want to go up on the engine? And the thing about this is, like, the improvability, I don't think it can go much higher. Boosting it up to the BMW here would not help the improvability that much, and it's a 6 million jump. This is the same. I may just want to go with this, because this is good but not great. We've got plenty of money. It's still going to leave us with $40 million. The, the chassis cost, I can't imagine myself spending more than $30 million here. So the chassis cost is not as high as I thought it might be. It's still significant. It's still more than it was at the previous level, but not by that much. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to go with, I think. Um, and it also helps boost that fuel efficiency that I'm going to have garbage with from down here. Let's see. If I went here, what would that do to the fuel efficiency? Yeah, that would be worse. This would be even better fuel efficiency than this, but not quite as strong performance. The, no, the improvability wouldn't quite be there. But I like this. It boosts the fuel efficiency some. Second best overall stat modifier. Keeps the improvability high. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I want to plan on spending about $25 million. Uh, that's going to be the amount that I'm going to go with on a regular basis for the chassis. And our mechanic wants to sign as well. So that's three for three on the first try. Might mean I'm not driving a hard enough bargain, but let's replace Doyle. Let's see what he has to say. Nothing, really. 
Always looking to hire the best talent the industry can offer, and Georgios is no exception. Well, he's not quite the best, but he's good. He'll be delighted with new appointments. Same probably can't be said for the person he replaced, Robert Doyle. True, true, true. All right. So now we have all of our staff set, and we just need to move forward. And here's our first decision to make. RBM have been in the news lately after one of their engines caught fire in their garage. GMA are calling their work practices unsafe. We have an opportunity with upcoming marketing materials to exploit this mishap and compare it to our superior working conditions. Chairman might not like this because it's not exactly a classy move, but business is business. It would boost our marketability, which we much need, and happiness would go down. From a pure math point of view, it makes sense to do this. It's just sort of, you know, this question, do we want to be cutthroat or do we want to sort of, you know, stay above the fray, don't, uh, don't throw other teams under the bus. And I'm going to take the sort of the high moral ground here. It's going to hurt us some, but I just, I don't feel like doing that. Laurent Depine wants to uh, take a look at our HQ. It'd be much more interesting, interested in your team if you were to write a good article. On the other hand, we wrote a bad article claiming you were closed and backward thinking. I said no last time. Let's see um, Caroli's morale. Because he's new. Yeah, it's very high. I'm going to go ahead and let them do that. Because it's going to upset him a little bit, but we need the press. We really do need the press. That does give us a boost to our team marketability, up to 72%. It obviously went up from our moving up a slot. And then we will get a couple opportunities here, but then some not till the end of the season to boost our sponsorships. We are up at a solid four star and almost five, so that's nice. Okay, now we have to deal with the liveries, which are different uh, now that we're up a level. Okay, looks like we're still going to have the same car model. That's not bad. Huh, that one's just like all yellow. I do like going with more orange. That's a little bit too much orange. Hmm. Kind of splotchy, but interesting. That one's darker. Darker on the one side, and then... <laughs> Multicolored on that side. That's kind of weird. This one is very different, but I feel like changing things up. I'm going to go with that. So, new look. Bizarre look, I do admit. But new look, new year, new team, new all of those fun things. Preseason testing. We're going to see how much we suck. Been looking at the place of the new fuel tank. There's a lot of flexibility. Some small adjustments give us some gains. Overall improvability, but also would affect fuel efficiency. Well, we've already pretty much maxed out improvability, so I'm just going to leave it. Maybe it's possible to go above that initial five star rating, but I'm assuming that it's not. Okay, preseason testing, and yeah, 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 energy recovery system. We're very familiar with that. Haven't used it in a while, though. I'm looking forward to getting back to that. Our two young drivers getting out there on the track. And 
and wow, 13th and 14th, almost middle of the pack. That's kind of surprising to me. HWA leads the way. Wasn't the best show until the truth. We're well down in our expected position. What? Yeah, you're a little bit uh, ridiculous there. Okay, team targets. Now, I think I made a mistake last time. I picked first place, and therefore, even if we won, our marketability stayed the same. If we lost, our marketability went down. So I think it's best to, unless you really, really need the money, to aim low, and then just you know have them get that marketability boost to get yourself better sponsors. So, they're seeing us as anything above 10th would be seen as a success. And I'm going to go really conservative here. I'm just going to pick the 12th. Because I think 8th would be too aggressive. And this would only be like a 3 million gain. We've got lots of money. So I'm going to go here and I really want to drive our marketability up and get 5 star sponsors. It's one of my goals to have happen up here. So that we can really have a lot of money to invest in whatever we need to. I'd like to boost the... Uh, the factory or the, the headquarters factory up more all of those things all right, let me look at that let me see how much that would be if we upgrade the fact yeah it's gonna cost 30 million we're not doing that now another 150 K per it takes 30 weeks I wouldn't mind at all upgrading the factory say for next next year but right now I just yeah I don't think I can push that so I'm very interested to see, we have an average HQ, it says, but our factory is at the bottom. What uh, what sort of, how we compare in terms of our part development, whether or not we're actually gaining on them significantly. As we look at the, the, you know, the car stats have changed some here. Let's, uh, let's take a look at our parts overall. They're all around the same level, probably because of that reset. And this might have, that might have helped us a little bit. But yeah, it definitely did. We're 9th, 9th, 12th, 11th, 11th. Okay. And then still overall last. But the, the overall arrows are not nearly up as high. So that part reset uh, helped us. We'll see at the end of the year, a little further towards it, where did we gain on this or, or what's going on with that? Should be able to do it, I would think, with the improvability, but our HQ, not the best. In any case, we are pretty much set up for Munich. We'll need to adjust our pit crew and do various other things. But it's time to get to know our new opposition and see if our excellent drivers, which are now ranked number one, outstanding. Um, so if Menezes and Caroli can carry us to some earlier success or if we're going to struggle a lot at this level. All that will be coming up next time. Till then, thanks for watching. 2020 season kicks off next time in Munich.